Hello and welcome to In Stitches. Today I'm recording from the conservatory. It's been a while since I've recorded from the conservatory here. I think the last time I recorded in here was during the lockdown when there was no uh, traffic around. So uh, excuse any background noise you might notice uh, vehicles and a little bit of wind and whatnot. But uh, the topic of today's video is this uh, typical high lift uh, long arm walking foot machine. Uh, model number is GC20606. Six dash one H L one eight, and the one eight uh, stands for eighteen inches uh, between the arm and the the inside of the arm and the needle. So that's uh, two uh, four hundred and sixty uh, millimeters thereabouts. So yeah, nearly half a meter. Yep. So she's a big beast. So I'll build the table up first, and then once I've done that, we'll, um, I'll get someone to help me uh, put the machine head into the table, and then I'll be able to show you around the machine from there. There's the table there. She's fairly substantial. Measure this. You're looking at uh, 55 inches just over, so uh, 1.4 meters long. So yeah, fairly substantial. The cutout, so the bed, uh, the bed width or length is just under 29 inches, so uh, 730 millimeters for the bed alone, and we've got uh, two feet wide there, so just over 60 centimeters, 600 mil. So yeah, she's uh, fairly beefy, and it's got a nice big beefy stand to go with it. So I'll go ahead and get that. Uh, built up. I've got the motor to install. I'll show you that in a second. So I'll get on with this and I'll come back once the table's mostly built up and ready to put the motor on there. There we go. I've got most of the uh, stand built up there. I haven't attached it to the table yet. And I've just unpacked the motor. There is the uh, motor that attaches to the bottom of the table there. there you can see the two screw holes just here for two of the mounting screws. It's, uh, this machine's not a direct drive machine, this is, has a separate motor. And this is a Hosing model M7-75-K servo motor. And it's a more powerful motor than a standard motor. And this motor also has a powered brake where when, you, when the machine stops, uh, the brake is actually powered on and stops any rollback. So uh, with a big machine like this, especially with a high lift, uh, you get a lot of rollback potentially if you don't have a powered uh, brake on the motor. Okay, here it is in all its glory. I can't run it unfortunately because I'm waiting for a uh, part to arrive to attach the synchronizer on the end of the hand wheel. Uh, this is the synchronizer here and that attaches to the uh, hand wheel over here uh, to the end there. And what that does is it, uh, you know, facilitates the needle positioning. So the needle up and needle down positioning. Uh, because this machine doesn't have a built-in uh, direct drive servo motor, uh, we need a synchronizer to uh, do that. And that interfaces with the, uh, the motor. So, yeah, there's the, there's the beast. She's a uh, pretty decent size. Uh, if we have a measure up here, distance between the needle and the inside of the arm there is yeah 18 inches as I said so yeah around about 460 uh, millimeters so fairly decent it's also a, a, a high lift machine so you know I've got a lot of distance up in here as well and that is about uh, about six inches there so 150 millimeters approximately in here so we've got a decent amount of room in there yeah and that's so uh, that's what it's designed for is to get a lot of uh, material in, in this area here and, you know we've got a lot more going on here and you know, a lot more room up in here as well so you know that's the uh, the high lift there and it is a full compound feed walking foot so you can see as the needle goes down through the work there so obviously there's no material in there at the moment but just to show you the full compound feed We've got the feed dog here. We've got an inner presser foot there. 
and an outer presser foot. The outer presser foot remains stationary as far as feeding is concerned if we're in this direction, uh, but it does step, so it does get lifted. If I put the press foot down, I'll put the press foot down in a second, I just wanted to um, show you this clearly, but the needle comes down through the work and uh, you'll see that the uh, center foot here and the feed dog and the needle all work in unison there. That's what they call uh, full compound feed walking foot. So if I uh, put the foot down there, you'll be able to see the motion there. So we've got the outside foot lifting as the inside foot feeds along with the needle and the feed dog and then the uh, outside foot clamps the material and the inner foot lifts as the feed dog, the inner foot and the needle comes forward to do another stitch there. So yeah, pretty nifty. Now if we have a look under the table here, just down here we've got this cross bar here and that, what that does is it allows the uh, a foot pedal here that's connected here because this machine's so wide the foot pedal is a long way from the motor over here with the uh, the motor actuator here we've got the pedal over where the operator would uh, operate the machine and then we've got this uh, bar here that links the two together you see so as the operator pushes their foot down there the Pitman rod linkage there comes up to this linkage up here and turns this entire bar here and in turn it turns this, actuates this rod here and this uh, tiny little Pitman rod I've got there. So that rod is um, mounted in two bearings. You can see the, there's a, a bearing up in here and there's another one just here. So yeah, that's the uh, the motor and the foot pedal set up. This pedal here on the right, that's a foot lifter. So um, that's for lifting the presser foot. So I was explaining before about rollback. Uh, the, the thing with rollback is, is that there's a lot of spring pressure down on these feet here. So if the machine you know, is coming to the uh, needle up position, which would be when the take up lever rises to the top position there, there, what can happen is because there's so much pressure on these feet, you know, generated by springs up in um, behind the faceplate here, what can happen is the machine can actually turn backwards and it can roll backwards, it's called rollback. And as you may know, that rollback or turning a machine backwards while it's threaded is a big no-no. You get all sorts of problems with jamming. And um, you know, I'm turning it backwards there because it's it's fine, it's, it's not threaded, so there's no chance of any jamming there. So you definitely don't want that rollback. You don't want your machine running backwards. So the powered brake uh, clamps the machine in, into position when it's in the stopped state. So yeah, that's the purpose of the more powerful motor with the powered brake. Just to put it into perspective, I thought I'd uh, bring in a little Elna Supermatic there, just to give you an idea of scale. And you can see that the little Elna is about half the size <laughs> or half the length of this machine. So yeah, that just puts it into perspective there, just in case you know you didn't quite get the. Uh, sometimes with the video, you don't quite get the perspective of the as to how big the machine actually is. So you, when the part turns up for the synchronizer there, I'll get that attached and uh, I'll show you the machine running. But in the meantime, I'll leave it at that for this video. Uh, thank you very much to my patrons as always for um, your contributions. And thank you very much for watching.